Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are, and welcome back to another episode of Red Pill Religion, where among the things we like to say here, our religion and politics can never be separated. Please check us out online, where you're most likely listening now, on our YouTube channel at Red Pill Religion. Give us a, uh, give us a like uh, and, and subscribe if you haven't already. We're also on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook group called Red Pill Religion, and we're on Gab AI. We have a, a page there as well, and on Dissenter, which is uh, Gab's new uh, new commenting platform. We are also on Minds.com, and we have a blog, RedPillReligion.com, uh, and a storefront there uh, where you can purchase various items with images created by our artists and residents. So you can also support us by purchasing those items from our storefront. And as always, we could use your financial support and donations for all kinds of different uh, expenses associated with the Red Pill Religion Project. You can support us through Patreon, either through one-time donations, or you can become a monthly supporter, which would uh, be very appreciated. And you can also donate through PayPal, which we have linked to our blog, and through Bitcoin. And... I uh, am kind of new here uh, as far as a, a voice on Red Pill Religion, so you probably don't recognize my voice. Um, and my name is Aaron. I have a YouTube channel called Isle of Aaron. That's spelled A-R-R-A-N. Um, and just to give you a brief background about who I am, I was born into a, a, a religious uh, or a reformist Jewish family. Um, and I, uh, ended up later, uh, in my kind of late teens, uh, uh, be being saved by, by, by Christ. Um, and, uh, sort I, I never fully, fully observed Christianity though. I was just kind of one of those people who identified as a Christian, but not, but I didn't fully observe. Uh, and then, uh, later, I lived in the Pacific Northwest, uh, and I attended uh, Portland State University. And uh, when I was attending Portland State University, I became involved with a student group there that uh, that was centered around boycott, divestment, and sanctions, or BDS. And for any of any of you out there who don't know what BDS is, I'll just read directly from the website. It's bdsmovement.net. And it says uh, on the overview that the BDS movement is building an economic boycott of Israel and developing effective campaigns against companies that participate in Israel's oppression of Palestinians. International companies aid and abet Israel's violations of international law, including by operating in illegal Israeli settlements and acting as contractors for the Israeli military and government. Campaigning has led to major companies such as Veolia and Orange selling up and leaving Israel altogether and a range of investors divesting from Israel and international companies. The UN, the World Bank, and other experts say that BDS is having an important economic impact on Israel and that this could well grow as the movement develops. And then in the intro, which, which uh, has the headline of Economic and Corporate Support for Israeli Apartheid, reads, The economic boycott of Israel aims to put pressure on Israel to comply with international law and to persuade private companies to end their participation in Israel's crimes. The Israeli economy is especially dependent on international trade and investment, making it especially susceptible to international economic boycotts. Many international companies such as G4S and HP profit from helping Israel to maintain its system of apartheid and settler colonialism. Campaigns against and divestment from international companies increases the pressure on them to end their complicity with Israel's oppression of Palestinians. So it's basically uh, a response to the perceived uh, oppression of the Israeli state and, um, and apartheid of the Israeli state of uh, Palestinian Arabs, and um, there, uh, there's also a lot of other issues that play into it, such as the Palestinian right to return. Uh, and I became involved with the student group basically because um, I, I, I am Jewish by birth, and I uh, figured that 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 if 
there's uh, if the state of Israel, uh, which is a it, it defines itself defines itself as a Jewish state. Um, if if it was going to be if it was carrying out these 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 alleged crimes and it, it's a Jewish state, then I kind of had an issue with that happening on my behalf as a Jew. Uh, and then I kind of uh, started to to wonder if 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 B the principles of BDS actually aligned with the principles of a free market, and I sort of I I I wasn't sure on that. I kind of just distance myself from it more because I, I wasn't sure about all that. Years later, after I became involved with the Red Pill Religion Project, I came across the work of Imad ad-Din Ahmad, and he is the co-founder of the Minaret of Freedom Institute, who uh, I, I uh, did a pre-recorded interview with, and that's what you'll be listening to tonight. Um, then I came across his work uh, initially, what what piqued my interest is a video of his uh, online that's titled In "Intelligent Design: Muslim Perspective," uh, where I, if I remember correctly, he is discussing um, the pro or the evidence for intelligent design uh, through physics, um, and as far as uh, and as far as our our discussion tonight, it it has really you know, nothing to do with that. But um, we ended up kind of uh, agreeing to, to do this interview due to my interest in, in, in how, how he does think that BDS, uh, BDS uh, aligns with, with principles of, of a free market, which are principles that many uh, Americans hold dear who also are, are big supporters of, of, of our constitutional rights and our constitutional rights to free speech. And um, this is also happening, uh, this interview that is, is happening in the wake of many states, I think up to 29 now, are pushing for legislation that would basically criminalize any potential talk of BDS uh, or support of BDS. Um, and uh, so that's a very important issue as well concerning free speech. So with that, here is our interview. So Dr. Ahmed, what is the Minaret of Freedom Institute? The Minaret of Freedom Institute is a, a Muslim libertarian think tank that was founded in 1993. Uh, for the purpose of countering distortions about Islam, showing the origin of certain modern values that came out of Islamic civilization, educating Muslims and non-Muslims on the importance of liberty and free markets, and trying to advance the status of Muslims, whether they live in the oppressive East or the hostile West. We do that through academic papers, through um, interviews, through educational programs. Um, our, our blog has become very, very important uh, a method of, of communicating um, and through uh, collaboration with other organizations um, through uh, interfaith um, exercises or through uh, uh, educational programs of various kinds. Ah, so you work with people from various religious backgrounds then? Yes, with Christians and with Jews. And uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I actually participated in a program at American University on uh, Hindu-Muslim relations. So, ah, that's interesting. So, one of the reasons I um, I initially was interested in in having a conversation with you had to do with your stance on the boycott, divestment, and sanctions uh, movement and the BDS. Uh, and for people out there listening who are unfamiliar with BDS, uh, it, it has to do with the addressing the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reading this off the website, it's uh, bdsmovement.net, and it says uh, it's um, an economic boycott of Israel that that aims to put pressure on Israel to comply with international law and to persuade private companies to end their participation in Israel's crimes. 
the Israel economy is especially dependent on international trade and investment, making it especially susceptible to international economic boycotts. Many international companies such as G4S and HP profit from helping Israel to maintain its system of apartheid and settler, settler colonialism. Campaigns against and div divestment from international companies increases the pressure on them to end their complicity with Israel's oppression of Palestinians. Uh, so it was set up to address, you know, oppression by, or, you know, what, what many people believe to be oppression by the Israeli state and support for Israeli apartheid or to end support for Israeli apartheid. Uh, and the apartheid, many people believe, is taking place is widely compared to the apartheid that was going on during the uh, apartheid era South Africa. And there are also many people who deny uh, that apartheid exists in, in Israel. Um, many pro-Zionists and, and many, um, you know, very ardent uh, supporters of the Israeli state and Israel's right to exist as a homeland for Jewish people. And um, it was back in... 2010 when I uh, attended uh, Portland State University and I was uh, involved to some extent with the uh, BDS student group there just because I wanted to know why it was people were concerned uh, and people believed that apartheid exists in Israel and why uh, why Israel was you know, considered to be by many people a terrorist state, and why, uh, uh, you know, they they believed that that it was oppressing Palestinians. Um, and I started to wonder, you know, whether or not BDS uh, aligned with with uh, in or whether boy boycotting, should I say? in general, aligned with, with the principles of, of a free market. Um, and and you, believe, you believe it does. Right. So how is it that you see BDS aligns with free market principles? Well, I think the uh, issue is quite essential. If you, if you believe in a free market, then you believe in the right of individuals who participate in the market to engage or to refrain from engaging in any particular trade or transaction or set of trades or transactions within that market. Therefore, if I have the right to purchase some product from some seller, I must have the right to refuse to purchase that product from that seller or, uh, or, or, to, or to refuse to purchase the product at all or refuse to deal with the seller at all and vice versa. Uh, if a free market doesn't mean that, then it doesn't mean anything. That's fair enough. That makes sense to me, uh, you know, especially if, if uh, you know, the, the, the products that, that you're boycotting, you know, if, if uh, they are seen as, as unethical and, and harmful and uh, so on and so forth. To my knowledge, one of the main reasons why people uh, who oppose BDS do oppose it is that the the people who who started uh, the BDS movement were uh, connected with Hamas and the Hamas Charter and the idea that it you know that it calls for you know the all out destruction of the Israeli state and of the Jewish homeland and um. And I guess to me that that's also pretty understandable because of the whole idea of never again.
why is it any harder to separate BDS from Hamas than to separate uh, the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa from the ANC? The ANC was accused of being a communist organization. And uh, while that may have been an exaggeration, um, you know, it's it sort of, I think it's beside the point. Uh, if someone is opposed to apartheid, they should have the right to, to, uh, to boycott uh without uh, having to uh you know uh, justify uh the origins if indeed that were the origins of the movement which i understand is disputed uh to, to to dispute the origins of the movement furthermore i very very um one of the things that needs to be talked about very much is this attempt to conflate israel with judaism they're not the same thing Quite apart from the fact that, as I said, Orthodox Jews at one point were opposed to the establishment of the state of Israel, and some of them still are, there is the fact that uh, it's the one thing that perhaps was, you know, the objectionable parts of the uh, of the Hamas Charter were the ones that were anti-Jewish as opposed to anti-Israel, and that made some confusion uh, between those two uh, concepts. But the fact is, the defenders of Israel in the United States do the same thing. They want to conflate the two and they want to say that, you know, if you are critical of Israel, then you are anti-Semitic. But even someone who wants to just doesn't believe in that the Israeli state is justified may not be anti-Semitic. After all, uh, you know, there was a, and unfortunately I'm having a mental block at the moment. I can't remember his name, but there's a famous, very extreme right-wing Zionist, a very uh, a founder of a terrorist uh, group in, in, in Israel. Uh, who once uh, made the uh, the following question as a challenge to liberal Zionists? He said, uh, "How can you have?" He said, "Just tell, just explain to me, how can you have a state that is democratic, Jewish, and mostly non-Jews?" That's the question, and that's why. Then, so when someone says, as I do, I believe in the right of return. I believe that every Palestinian should have the right to decide whether or not he wants to go back to his homeland. Uh, Zionists will say, well, that's, uh, you see, that's calling for the destruction of the state of Israel, because even though you don't put it in those words, when all the Palestinians who want to come back, come back, they're going to be a majority. And then either Israel can no longer be a democracy or can no longer be a Jewish state. Yes, that that is uh, actually something I struggle with as far as just secularism uh, or uh, secularist Israel in general goes, how it is that uh, it could call itself a Jewish state, yet be secularist at the same time. I, I it, it just seems, you know, a bit um, counterintuitive to me to, to some extent. I don't quite understand, um, you know, other than, than uh, Judaism isn't necessarily a religion, uh, and it's, it's an ethnic um it, it, it's an ethnicity um and so that part of it you know i i think that's that's what what's used to justify it being a secular state yet jewish at the same time um and there's really just a lot there you know to to unpack yeah, i know we've just scratched the surface <laughs> yes indeed and uh i I know you're pressed for time this evening. Uh, one of the other topics we we have yet to discuss is is the uh, that is the uh, pertaining to the uh, anti BDS uh, legislation and then the anti free speech legislation uh, regarding BDS, which which would basically make it. Uh, it would basically criminalize any any talk about BDS in in what is it something like twenty five states, and I see that as as a major problem, you know, re regarding constitutional rights in this country and, and and the constitutional right to free speech. I should add, it's not it's not just legislation. There have also been executive orders here in Maryland. Governor Hogan issued an executive order that anyone who wants to do business with the state has to sign a statement saying that they will not participate in the BDS. Oh, wow. So that that makes it even more complicated and, and makes it even more anti-free market in a profound way. 
and that 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 would um, do a lot to drown out the voices of of um, anyone who who has grievances uh, uh, about these companies and, and their their policies and uh, that that to me seems rather counter to, counterintuitive uh, as far as you know possibly countering extremism for example uh, and also um, as far as democracy in Israel goes well that that's true but remember remember they don't have a first amendment like we do and i'm i'm admittedly naive regarding uh israel's uh, you know co constitution and, and and israel's uh free speech um any you know laws on free speech in israel but um i do you know believe very very sincerely that 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 uh people should be able to discuss this issue freely uh here and in israel and anywhere uh without it being labeled anti-semitic um because uh i'm very much aware as to how you know that that limiting free speech could could potentially lead to extremism more extremism um and and i believe people should be able to uh d discuss uh this issue you know who, who are on different sides and how to reach agreements on on moving forward and and how to uh, address grievances of of palestinians and i do think it's very silly that people are just automatically shut down from having any any discussion about this and and automatically labeled as being anti-semitic or hateful towards jews well you know i i alluded to this earlier i didn't get a chance to give it the emphasis it, it really deserves uh but the fact is that one of the uh, things that annoys me is the presentation of the the Israeli-Palestinian dispute as a religious dispute. It is not a religious dispute. It is a land dispute, which has been given the color of religion. The fact is that the original Zionists were people who were atheists or agnostics. They were not particularly religious Jews. And it's not just the Orthodox Jews, by the way, who have uh, uh, who criticize Zionism. Uh, one of the best early books on this question was What Price Israel by a man named L Ralford Lilienthal. Lilienthal was a religious Jew, not, not an extremist by any means, uh, uh, but one who got uh, smeared and even got death threats uh, because he dared to question Israel. Oh, well, I'm not familiar with that author, but uh, I, I will definitely look up information uh, about him. Uh, and I am well aware that does happen with with jewish people who who criticize israel and criticize israel's foreign policy um and i do believe that that uh again it, it's a, a huge mistake to uh disregard um the first amendment um and our first amendment rights in this country in the name of shutting down any talk about bds and and uh, we should be able to to have discussion about this openly and discuss grievances uh for people any any people who have grievances and uh you know as far as uh, free market principles go as well i i think uh it, you know it's completely counterproductive to uh to shut down free speech about 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 this topic um but I do realize we're running out. We're we, we're running out of time, and um, and so it would probably be a good idea to to close this out. Uh, and um, I I'd love to have you back on in the future, though, uh, uh, you know, soon, if possible. I'd be glad to do that. Yeah, that that would be great. Um, and I I'd also be interested in uh, possibly discussing some other topics with you. Um, I know, I know you're, you've studied physics, 
and um and it would be i'd be very interested in in discussing your your ideas about uh, how physics kind of provides evidence for god and i i know that's a very big big topic of, of discussion right there but with that are there any closing thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners oh. <laughs> um l- let me just uh make a a personal statement um about how i once was a- attacked to show uh, i i had given a speech at um, um the university of pennsylvania to uh, at, at the invitation of a student group and um, uh, during the speech, uh, I, or at the end of the speech, I was challenged by a member of the audience um, uh, for my support of the two-state solution. And he said, Are, was I saying that Israel had a right to exist? Uh, a student, obviously a, a critic of, a severe critic of Israel, and one who denied Israel's rights to exist. And I said to him, um, I am not claiming that Israel has a moral or a legal right to exist. All I'm saying is that people want peace on both sides and that we have to acknowledge that the Jews of Europe did suffer horribly uh, in Europe and especially in World War II. There was a Holocaust and that they were looking for refuge and that they are some of them are now here in palestine and that as an act of charity uh a two-state solution would be a way of accommodating the situation um and that therefore out of a desire for peace a pragmatic desire for peace we should uh, palestinians should uh accept the two-state solution um the school newspaper the next day had an article about my speech and although the article was actually quite uh, accurate presentation of my speech the headline was uh speaker denies israel's rights to exist <laughs> and um uh, uh and it was picked up by um uh, uh, uh one of the uh anti-muslim websites and i uh uh you know and and i uh and what it was, but I was, I was gratified that the students wrote to the paper who had been at the lecture, and they said this headline was really misleading, and, <laughs> and described what you know what I had actually said. But the question you know that it brings up is why? Why would a newspaper headline writer, and why why would a troll website, you know, try to misrepresent what someone was saying in that way? Yeah, that that's a good question, and uh, definitely uh, a topic wor- worthy of discussion. Uh, that that could even make uh, for for a good episode all by itself. Um, and and I I I really do hope that these uh, anti free speech laws are are, uh, are rejected as far as the, you know the, these anti BDS laws go. Uh, in 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 this country, but um, it has been great having you on tonight, though, uh, and I I really do appreciate your time. It's been a very interesting discussion with you, and uh, we'll we'll have you on again soon. <laughs>